Hello and welcome along to Creating Motion Graphics in Adobe After Effects with your host Robert Smith. In this video we're going to animate a multi-layered Photoshop document which is bread and butter technique in After Effects. So let's get our Photoshop file into After Effects. We've created it. So I double click over here on this project window, go to my import file. Now the file I want is a layered file .psd. Now the important thing to understand about this is this little dialog box here. If I click on footage it'll come in as a single layer which is not what I want. I want it to be composition retain layer styles like that. Okay in other words it's going to make a composition for us automatically. Thanks very much After Effects. If I click on open and OK, nothing to look at there. OK, now as you have a look at our um, project window, we now have a composition, there's the icon, and we have a layered Photoshop file inside a folder like that. If I click on it, it'll tell us up here what it is. If I click on one of the layers, the information up here will tell us exactly what's going on with it. OK, now to see this composition that um, After Effects has um, so kindly made for us, we simply just double click on this icon here and here it is. Now the only thing that After Effects didn't know about this file when it imported it into a composition was how long that composition was going to be in terms of seconds or minutes whatever. So what it did, it simply made a composition that was the exactly the same as the last one that you've made. It remembered. If you want to change that I can go to composition settings up here or Apple K, Control K on the PC and just check these things out here as we've looked at in previous videos and the duration is correct six seconds that's good if I wanted to change that I just simply select all that and type in 600 It'll give us six seconds and OK as you can see we now have a timeline that's six seconds long now what I'm going to animate I'm going to animate the basic properties of any um, layer that you put into Photoshop now what I have done, I've been a bit um, recalcitrant, there's a big word isn't it for a graphic designer. Um, I've actually got more layers than I need and I know this bottom layer here. If I can check that out by just clicking on these little icons, these eye icons to see what this is, this layer here, it's not doing anything at all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select it and this is good technique, I'll just delete it before I start animating. And many times you'll do that, you'll have some errant layers you don't really need. OK, so let's start to animate. Now, whenever we bring any um, Photoshop or layered document into uh, After Effects, um, these automatic layering inside the composition is really, really handy. And we can work on all these layers all at once if we want, or individually. So I'm going to work um, on these layers to start off with all at once. So I'm going to select the top layer and hold the Shift key down and select so all the layers are selected. And now, Real estate inside After Effects can get very, very scarce. We have so many dialog boxes. So a really neat little trick is to just press the tilde key like this when this area is selected down there. And you'll notice all we see now is our timeline. And what I want to do is I want to open up and I can just press the tilde again to um, switch between those two like that. Very nice indeed. Okay. So here I am. What I'm going to do, I'm going to twirl down one of these um, twirly things, very technical there, and there's my transform options for each one of these layers. And If I open up one like that, they, they'll all open up because they're all selected. And there's the five properties that we can animate. Anchor point, position, scale, rotation and opacity. Okay, what I want to do is I want this um, logo at one second to look exactly like this. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in, go over here, double click on these numbers and type in 100 like that, press return and my current time indicator will then snap to 100 which is great. Now you've probably noticed that we've lost a couple of seconds on our timeline here, we've only goes up to 4 seconds instead of 6 and that's because we've zoomed in on our timeline and here's a neat little thing in After Effects, you had to zoom in on your timeline, it's this little yellow thing here. If I drag to the left, it zooms right in. If I drag to the right, it zooms right back out to six seconds. So let's we'll talk more about that, how that works later. And so if that happens, if you you don't have the amount of seconds that you uh, you think you've got, just, just slide that all the way to the right, and you'll see the whole timeline. Okay, here we are, one second in time, like this. So I'm just going to press the tilde key while I'm here, 
and I'm going to open up all of these options so you can see what happens. What I want to do is, because they're all selected, all my layers like that, and we're at one second in time, if I click on position for one layer like this, you'll notice that all the position properties in each of those layers will now have a keyframe because they're all selected. And I'll do the same for scale, and the same for rotation, and the same for opacity. As you can see, it's giving me four keyframes like that right at the start of our operation, which is exactly what we want. And what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to close up these um, layers by um, closing that top twirly thing, and then press my tilde key to go back to where I was. Very handy, that. Okay, so now what's happened is we've simply put keyframes, or we've taken snapshots at one second in time along our timeline, and that's what this is going to look like. So now what we want to do is we want to actually break it apart at the start so that when it gets to one second, it'll look like this. So I'm going to go back to my, um, back to the start of my timeline like that. And the first thing I'm going to work on is the position um, of these things. I'm just going to scatter them out a little bit like this. Okay, now to do that, what I'm going to do, I'm going to select all the layers by hold, select the top one, hold the shift key down. I'm going to press the letter P, a great little shortcut. And what that does, it opens simply that position properties. So all you're looking at is the position keyframes. Remember we put uh, keyframes for scale and all sorts of things, but we can't see them now. It's just a, a nice, handy way of managing your timeline and your real estate. So here we are, back at frame, frame or back at the start with the current time indicator. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select each one of these layers individually by just clicking anywhere down here in the gray area first, and then just selecting the first layer and with the option key, sorry, with the shift key down and the left arrow, I'm just going to move that to about there, like that. I do the same with the next layer, select the next layer, move it across like this, and you'll notice I'm getting automatic keyframes. As soon as I move or anything changes in terms of position, watch it down here in layer 3, I'm on now, I can just move that up there like that to about there. And I'll do the same with layer 2, this one here, select that and move that down to about here and I get an automatic keyframe now the that's the beauty of artifacts it'll give it looks at where things are in terms of position and if anything changes it needs to take a snapshot or a keyframe and that's what it's done so let's have a look at that fantastic so in the first frame um, they look like that in terms of position and when we get to there they've come back together again exactly how we had it fantastic okay now let's add some other um, functions to it. So I'm going to select all those layers like that. And this time I'm going to press the S for scale. S is a great shortcut. You'll notice over here now I have all the scale properties. The position scales got uh, the position properties gone away and these are scale keyframes. So I'm going to go back to the start like this, back to frame one. And because I've got them all selected and we want to scale them uh, the scale them all at once, I'm just going to click on this first number here and type in 50. You'll notice they all change. The scale of all of them changes and we get appropriate keyframes to tell artifacts that. So as you can see, very nice indeed. Not only scaling but changing position over time. Okay, let's do the same thing with the transparency or the opacity. I like to call it in After Effects. I'll select all those layers. This time I'm going to press T for opacity. Now you probably think it should be O, that shortcut, but I think O is for something else. So press the letter T. Think of uh, opacity or transparency. That's what the T does. And I'm going to go do the same thing I did with the scale. I'm going to select all of these and just type in zero like that. Press return and it will give me keyframes for all of those layers. The opacity of all of those layers is down to zero. In other words, we can't see them. But as we go along our timeline, as you can see, they'll fade in over time up to 100%, and they'll scale beautifully like that. Very nice indeed. Okay, one more thing. I'm going to select them all again, make sure they're all selected. It can get a bit tricky the way that selects. This time, I'm going to press R for rotation, like this. And again, we already have our rotation keyframe at frame one. So I'm going to go back to the start like this. Now it's a little bit different with rotation. 
we have zero rotation at the start and that's what we want we want zero rotation so at right at this point here we have zero rotation too so what I'm going to do is rather than click here I'm just going to click over in this area over here you can see if I click on one of them it'll give me a keyframe and that's just a way of basically copying this keyframe here so nothing's changed right now nothing's changed as you can see there is no rotation and rotation is a bit tricky to start um, to understand so basically what you how it works is in the first of the two keyframes again let's remind ourselves we need two keyframes for any animation like that we have zero rotation now if I want to go to the next keyframe this one here at one second if I press the letter K on the that's the shortcut will take me to that one second in time and now I'm going to do the same thing I did before select the first of those numbers and just type in one rotation like that and press return and let's go back and have a look at that so as you can see now we've applied four properties that's scale position opacity and rotation and if I press the space bar watch the magic as it comes together and let's um, just summarize what we've done we started off with by taking a snapshot at one second of those four properties that's rotation uh, opacity scale and uh, position in other words we wanted to look like that at one second and then we went back to the start and we changed some of the properties like that so that after effects could work it out and put it together for us okay let's continue this in the next video thanks for watching